हाय देयर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून एंड गुड इवनिंग वेरी वेरी यू आर वेलकम टू माय टेक चैनल टेनेट प्रो टुडेज वीडियो टॉपिक इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू वी एक्स लैन येस दिस इज वेरी फास्ट वीडियो ऑफ दिस सीरीज लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट वी एक्स लैन इज वर्चुअल एक्सटेंसिवल लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क एंड इन ए वर्ड यू कैन से वी एक्स लैन इज जस्ट एक्सटेंसिवल वर्सन ऑफ वी लैन and uh, yes vxlan is uh, not a vendor proprietary it was originally created in a collaborations by arista cisco and vmware and uh, vxlan is uh, is a, a vlan extension technology that encapsulate the standard layer 2 ethernet frames within the l3 specifically its use udp port 4789 for the encapsulations The VXLAN was designed to address the growing needs of multi-tenant data centers. Now we will understand why a new approach, why it is required. So necessity is the mother of all inventions, as we know. Yes, first we are understand what is the requirement of the VXLAN, right? First need. I will explain what are the need and why we got stuck to achieve these things. The requirement in data center network and the next gen network is any workload anywhere, but in VLAN there is some limitation with the L3 boundaries, and VM mobility. Yes, in VLAN network it is not possible for the V uh, VM mobilities, right? scalability yes uh, vlan have some limitation as well on the 4k still 4k segment right it can create uh, maximum 4k segments vlan segment efficient use of bandwidth yes it is required uh, uh, but uh, in vlan it is uh, not be able to achieve uh, uh, with 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 a legacy vlan as yes, uh, secure multi tenancy uh, that is also uh, possible in on the vxlan because it's provide the security whereas uh, legacy vlan is not be able to provide you now what uh, vxlan provided or delivered to us that is that is here any workload anywhere across layer 3 boundaries now vxlan cross the layer 3 boundaries you can uh, send the traffic the l2 traffic over the l3 boundaries seamless mobility yes uh, vm mobility is possible very seamlessly because it is providing a uh, 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 l2 communication over the l3 right uh, scale up up to 16 million segment right in vxlan we can scale it up uh, up to 16 million whereas in legacy vlan there is a 4k limitation only a leverage of ecmp yes we can uh, take a leverage of the ecmp protocol uh, to optimal uh, path over the transport network traffic and address isolations we can do using vxlan so all can be achievable using vxlan and that's been developed by the arista vmr and cisco jointly now i will uh, put some lights on on uh, vlan and uh, vxlan to make it compare and understand in vlan we all know right uh, we use uh, for 12 bit uh, vlan id here we all the vlan call the vlan id uh, we use the vlan interfaces only 4094 vlan segment we can create vlan tagging id uh, between 1 to 4094 right whatever vlan we create in our l2 environment that can be uh, this much of uh, vlan we can create even uh, one is the default and l2 uh, networks uh, cannot be extend across the l3 this is the another limitation uh, had in vlan now if i uh, uh, put some light on the uh, try to understand the vx lan what it gives us uh, it's it's provide a 24 bit vni vni it is use vni id vni interface yes uh, uh, 16 million vlan segment we can create right it's use and uh, vxlan tagging id between 1 to uh, 16777215 so you can understand this much vlan segment or vlan id vni id so we can create right and uh, layer 2 networks can be extend across the l3 networks this is the great achievement and vxlan is one of the data center overlay technology right so this slide you can uh, treat as a comparison 
और कंपेयर और कोरिलेट विथ वी लैन एंड वी एक्स लैन राइट लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नाउ बिफोर गोइंग टू डीफ ऑन द वी एक्स लैन वी विल ट्राई द लिगेसी टैगिंग ऑल्सो राइट सो हियर वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द अनटेक इथरनेट फ्रेम दैट इज आई ट्रिपल ई एट जीरो टू डॉट थ्री स्टैंडर्ड राइट सो हियर वन थिंग आई विल आई विल हाईलाइट वर हियर दिस अनटेक इथरनेट फ्रेम ऑलवेज कम्युनिकेट बिटवीन यूजर और हाउस्ट और सर्वर टू द स्विच इट इज बीन अनटैक्ड एंड वट एवर द टैग बीन यूज विद इन द स्विचिंग एनवायरमेंट नाउ हाउ हाउ लुक्स लाइक द अनटैक इथरनेट फ्रेम विच विच सर्वर सेंड्स और द यूजर सेंड्स टू द स्विच टू गेट कम्युनिकेटेड द फ्रेम और द फ्रेम लुक्स लाइक दिस विथ टू हेडर्स राइट इथरनेट हेडर्स एंड पे लोड पे लोड ऑल वी नो द मेन डेटा राइट वट एवर वी वॉन्ट टू सेंड दैट इज द पे लोड ऑल वेज वील मेन्शन एज अ पे लोड एंड एफ सी एस इज फ्रेम चेक सिक्वेंस एज इट्स कम्युनिकेट विथ द एल टू नेटवर्क राइट इट्स अ डेटा लिंक लेयर एंड डेटा लिंक लेयर ऑलवेज वर्क विद द फ्रेम एंड दिस हेडर ऑलवेज चेक विद द फिजिकल लेयर द फ्रेम फ्रेम चेक सिक्वेंस वर्क्स विथ सी आर सी ऑल्सो राइट साइक्लिक या सो हेयर वन थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट इज बिफोर टू सेंड दिस डेटा दिस इज द मेन योर डेटा राइट सो यू नीड टू टू थ्री टू टू हेडर राइट मिनिमम टू हेडर दैट इज वन इज द इथरनेट हेडर एंड अदर वन इज द एफ सी एस हेडर येस ऑल दो एफ सी एस कम्स अंडर द इथरनेट हेडर एंड अंडर द इथरनेट हेडर मल्टीपल थिंग इज देयर राइट बिफोर सेंडिंग फ्यू मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन यू नीड लाइक वाय टू सेंड फ्रॉम वेर आई एम सेंडिंग दिस मच इन्फॉर्मेशन इन इज नीडेड दैट इज कॉल्ड वर हेयर एज ए इथनेट हेडर राइट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन अवर दियर ऑल्सो एंड एनदर थिंग इज दैट दिस दिस फ्रेम ऑलवेज सेंड बाय द एंड डिवाइस ट्रांसमिट टू द अनटैक इथरनेट फ्रेम टूअर्ड्स द आप स्टीम स्विचेस राइट एज आई टोल्ड यू आर दियर ऑल्सो नाउ वट वी कैन सी अंडर द इथरनेट हेडर एज वी नो द पे लोड इज द मेन डेटा right so what about the ethernet header we what we can see under the ethernet header let me explain over here so ethernet header here is uh, comes with 1 2 3 4 5 thing right five thing in the sense uh, five parameter preamble sfd destination mac address and source and mac address this two is very much required right uh, you must know what to send and from what you need to send so under the ethernet headers it's it's uh, located uh, the destination mac address the source mac address right then the type also is all there also there right Ty type in the sense uh, ipv4 or ipv6 right uh, preamble also there and fcs also there right so you can uh, if i explain uh, this uh, uh, ethernet ethernet uh, frame uh, i can explain like this way also so this much you can uh, see under the ethernet header so yes i have also explained uh, using uh, explain using uh, some text that is there uh, what is the meaning of uh, preamble right uh, sfd uh, destination mac source mac all these thing is here if i explain it will take more time let me uh, go ahead with this other part also yeah now uh, this is the uh, earlier slide we seen that uh, the uh, untagged uh, frame right where there is no tagging so it's it's similar to this thing right uh our ethernet header is there payload is there fcs is also there now what about the tagging part what is the tagging part once switch receive the frame it put one tag so that it can communicate it can forward the uh, frame within the switching network right so that he can understand the switching environment can understand uh, from which which vlan it, it is belongs and where to send right for that it's put one another tag so that is vlan tag right now once the switch received he puts one uh, one uh, another more uh, tag that is the vlan tag right so entire the frame looks like now one switch received right and it is uh, dot one q right uh, we all know <coughs> uh, so this is how the frame looks like once the switch received he put one tag vlan tag you can say 
in in uh, vlan network right now let me explain the vxlan header also here it is also same you can uh, you can you can compare with the udp uh, you can compare with the uh, ethernet header there are also outer uh, mac address outer ip addresses also there right another thing is there uh, likewise uh, vlan tagging uh, here vxlan header is also there similar to that and this is your original l2 frame and yes fcs also there so in uh, vxlan it's very much similar but here we use the vxlan tagging right vxlan header we will use earlier we use a vlan header here we will use uh, vxlan header so it is little uh, little different right uh, but uh, concept is similar let's go to the next uh, next uh, slide yes uh, uh, from here you can understand uh, under this uh, vlan vxlan header right uh, vlan vxlan tagging uh, you, uh, what are the component over here that you can understand over this uh, slide right and i will try to explain each and every part in uh, next video yeah <clears throat> now uh, again i will uh, make a comparison with the traditional vlan frame and the vxlan frame now uh, it is very easier to us to understand how the vlan frame is it's it's looks like uh, one trunk is there right we all know switch to switch communication one trunk is needed through uh, through the trunk multiple vlan can be passed right multiple vlan can be passed so this is how uh, this is also uh, one encapsulation dot one q trunk right earlier switch we uh, put this command encapsulation dot one q so in traditional uh, vlan we use the trunk through which this uh, through this trunk multiple uh, vlan can be passed right <clears throat> and this is also one encapsulation uh, uh, mechanism now what about the uh, vxlan frame let me explain over here so in place of the dot one q trunk we use over here the vtf vxlan uh, tunnel endpoint it is called the concept is same it is also uh, another uh, encapsulation method uh, through which uh, through which Mm, uh, multiple vxlan can uh, travel right uh, only difference is there uh, this this cannot travel over l3 network all right this cannot travel but uh, this vxlan vtap uh, 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 vxlan or vni id can travel l3 also all right over the l3 it can travel this is the main difference and why it's it's possible i will explain in uh, next next slide and sometime we call vxlan as a zim also right <laughs> just another encapsulation method <clears throat> and the the frame looks like uh, as i uh, so you earlier also uh, the dot, dot one q uh, frame is looks like uh, and the vtap or vxlan uh, frame is looks like this uh, already i have explained here the vlan tag is used uh, here is the vlan vxlan tagging used used in the frame right uh hope it is uh, informative right uh, with the comparison uh, what was earlier now what is let's <clears throat> get to the next uh, important slide uh, through this uh, diagram right through this architecture i will try to explain how the legacy l2 traffic get travel and how uh, the mac address get learned how it's populated and how the communication happen here <clears throat> i have given the example with the four server server 1 server 2 server 3 uh, and server 4 right so uh, why i give the example with the server here uh, as i am already uh, telling you that is is a vxlan environment right so in, in vxlan specially designed for the data center communication right <coughs> yeah let that, that that i will also explain now here uh, you have four server you have one trunk link definitely as it's a legacy vlan communications uh, this is the uh, trunk right is a trunk link right and now one thing try to understand there is two vlan i have given the example in the diagram vlan 10 vlan 20 again vlan 20 and vlan 10 right and this is the uh, trunk link now uh, here uh, the mac address of this server 1 this is the ip address of the server 1 now uh, one thing i will to try to explain over let me give some time yeah uh this is uh, belongs to vlan 1 eh, sorry uh, vlan 10 right uh, it's vlan 10 and and and, and, 
and uh, this is your uh, VLAN 20 right 20 right so two two VLAN is there right now now here I will give you the example with the communication if, if, if this server one wants to communicate with server 4 right and if I give you uh, the ownership of the server let's let get communicate uh, within uh, uh, server 1 to server 4 and as you are the network administrator uh, what you will do right uh, you know the destination IP right you you have the this much on, only this much information you have the destination IP is the 172.16.10.2 only and yes you also know the source IP from where you are going to communicate with the server 4 in that case uh, in that case uh, once you in, in, the, in the beginning of the network right you just establish this power one in this configure now you are just co going to communicate with each other right <clears throat> in this scenario once you uh, try to reach uh, uh, the server 4 what will happen uh, the source ip here uh, the cp is uh, the not ship protocol huh? <laughs> it's a it's a source ip so source ip would be your ip right one and destination ip would be uh, two the destination server ip server four so you have this this information already so what you will do you will ping right ping this uh, destination ip so once you ping you you don't know the destination mac address and your all communication is happening over the l2 fast right then only comes the l3 so what you will do you will send a rp request to the switch to get it resolved the destination mac address so how you will send your uh, destination mac would be as you don't know the destination mac address uh, the broadcast uh, destination mac address broadcast uh, mac address of the uh, l2 l2 mac address right that is f dot f dot f dot f, f, dot f, dot f. in that case i have uh, in in this case i have given the example with the f dot f dot f dot f for uh, understanding purpose right so as this is the broadcast uh, mac address what will do once you uh, ping right or other way out if you want to communicate with the server uh, uh, 4 what will happen uh, this packet or this frame will reach to your um, to your uh, switch right for the erp resolutions right so as your destination mac is the uh, broadcast mac address what will happen we will send the request to switch one just imagine this is the switch one and this is the uh, switch two huh? just imagine this thing now once we uh, send the request uh, to the switch what switch will uh, do switch will received one packet where destination ip is there source ip is there source mac is there but don't have the destination mac whereas the switch is communicated with the first first layer uh, data link uh, 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 layer right it will uh, it will work with the first mac address so even this switch also don't know the destination mac address you only have or he only received the destination broadcast address right so once he once the switch one received this uh, packet he will uh, make a mac table that is the source mac a a a a a and a connected in port 0 by 1 that he will do but other table he won't be able to create right why he won't be able to because he don't know the destination mac so once this uh, guy uh, received the switch one uh, received this uh, packet he will broadcast immediately everywhere except the uh, the port where from where he has received all right uh, hope it is uh, clear right so uh, this this uh, this switch also broadcast the same traffic over here using the trunk link all right using the trunk link and once the switch received you will see uh, the mac address the broadcast mac address you will uh, again the broadcast to other connected uh, port also you will not uh, take uh, check other other table because he is receiving the broadcast mac address right now once it is been broadcasted your uh, server 4 also received the same thing right that someone is query uh, asking you for uh, resolve the uh, destination IP 10.2 which is his IP now what he will do 
he will reply uh, he will definitely reply that hey uh, here i am right and, and i i am the ip 10.2 and my mac address is yyy now he will well understand that his destination is aaa as the request come from the aaa and his destination ip will change uh, to the from where the request came up right and so it would be his own ip so automatically he will create uh, this uh, frame with the ethernet tagging right uh, uh, with this uh, this header and uh, source and my source uh, mac address and destination ip source uh, ip and destination mac address right now what he will do he will immediately reply right where he will reply he knows his destination mac address and ip address both immediately he will reply so here to what you will do you will reply immediately so once he reply successfully automatically the mac table will be created fully right so here you can see this is the switch one mac table and erp table you can say also <coughs> and um, um, this mac table for the switch two right so he will understand the aaa is connected uh, just give me a moment this AAA, uh, this is the uh, MAC address where he is connected port, he is connected on this port. And now why, 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 where he is, he is on port 12, this. He only know he is learning here, he don't know other, other switch and right. He only, whatever request he will receive, he will forward to the, the here. And similarly, he also learn the same uh, MAC table, right. He will prepare the same MAC table, right. And he is the other the, the, uh, triple A uh, MAC address uh, will be learned from the port 24. Here is the 24. So if if the, if this guy also want to reach AAA and he will forward this to port number 24 and 24 will send this over here and already this switch knows now where it is connected. Yeah. So this is how the basic MAC address learning or uh, MAC table being created in the L2 communication legacy uh, communication right hope it is informative you can take the uh, screenshot also yeah so uh, let's let's go to the uh, the main main topic right vxlan here in vxlan uh, the the uh, trunk link will be eliminated right there is no direct trunk link right there is no direct trunk link only here leaf spine architecture will be introduced in data center uh, where uh, your spine will be connected to leaf all right you can see <coughs> there is no direct connection with the within the leaf right even <coughs> sorry even if you have the two uh, spine switch in that case also there would be no direct connections spine to spine right even lift to lift lift to lift lift switch to lift switch yeah and uh, now here uh, one thing very important as there is no uh, direct connection connectivity this this communication will happen over the spine switch right and this is the l3 network so if you see this diagram this person sorry this person is l3 try to understand and this person is l2 all your l2 vlan is uh, belongs to your uh, this segment right hope it is uh, clear <coughs> now here uh, try to understand one thing uh, very well that is uh, here two server i have given the example server one and server two in server one under the vm i have just given the example of the two virtual machine as it's a data center solutions uh, that's what only otherwise i can show you also two different physical boxes also yeah so uh, there is uh, two vm vm1 vm2 similarly in this in this uh, lip switch 2 uh, there is two vm uh, vm 4 and uh, 3 and 4 right now uh, two different vm in two different vlan right this vm 1 is as member of the vlan 60 and vm 2 is member of the vlan 70 yes similarly over here also uh, vlan uh, 70 is the member of vlan 4 sorry vm vm uh, 4 is the member of the vlan 70 and vm 3 is the member of VLAN 60. Hope it is uh, clear, right? 
and this vm uh, the this vm1 ip address is this mac address is this and vm70 ip address is uh, 70.1 and mac address bbb and here as well the ip address mac address ip address and mac address yeah now mm, one thing that i have uh, to show you two different uh, link but it is uh, physically one link right it's a physically one link now as i told you earlier also right in in first slide that is in vxlan only it's possible to communicate l2 traffic within the data center or within the other data center over the l3 network right over the l3 network so that's what uh, i have told you the vxlan with, with the vxlan only possible now here i, I try to um, highlight uh, one thing that is vxlan is one of the data center overlay technology right here other other technology is also there similar technology uh, something i am telling you the example like otv it is being used in the cisco nexus environment all right nexus switch environment uh, uh there is a trill uh, there is another concept trill that is also one of the overlay data center overlay technology right another one is the fabric path all right fabric path likewise uh, vxlan is also uh, there why vxlan so much popular because it's it's been kind of open source uh, and it has been developed by the vmware arista and the cisco it's commonly been used uh, entire everywhere in virtual network right hope it is clear so as we are discussing with the uh, vxlan we will always uh, talk with the vxlan only yes <coughs> now again the same same scenario i will take this this uh, this uh, v vm wants to communicate with a vm3 right they are in the same vlan but they want to communicate but here don't don't have any l2 communication right upper end all the l3 communication so then how how it's possible right so it's not new the the overlay tunnel kind of thing i just want to uh, call recall one thing uh, you will remember you will understand well earlier we had and we have also work with the gre tunnel right that is also very much similar with this right vxlan is also very much similar so uh, in in, in uh, gre tunnel what we need two interfaces right source and destination here is also same now uh, let me explain here in in the, in the switch right in, in the left switch uh, two vtap you need to create right you have to go with the vtap what is the vtap as i told you do as i told you that is the uh, vxlan uh, tunnel endpoint and in my language it's it's endpoint as well as starting point also right uh, uh, the first end and the second end i would say from here the tunnel is start right like gre tunnel so uh, vtap is being used uh, to establish a overlay tunnel right from here the overlay tunnel is get established uh then only traffic gets uh, travel right so you can see in in gre tunnel i will always uh, taking the name of the gre so that you can understand right in gre tunnel you need a source interface right int right and the destination int all right in gre tunnel you can use any of the live interface as a source interface and the destination so that the tunnel get established right it is very uh, natural but in vxlan you have to go with you have to go with uh, with the loopback ip address so you have to configure one loopback and that make a member of the vtap right and that is ip 1.1.1 and the ip i have given the example with the 2.2 vtap 2 right here uh, vtap 1 and vtap 2 uh, will be responsible to establish the tunnel right as a source and the as a destinations hope it is uh, clear so here this is your underlay 
प्लीज बियर विथ माई राइटिंग so uh, this is your uh, underlay and uh, this this uh, tunnel is established so where the using your uh, underlay l3 network uh, that is the overlay l2 network now how it is how it is possible how it gets communicate with each other that i will explain over here uh, try to understand this part huh? now as i give the example earlier uh, also if you, your server want to communicate with the server 2 you have a frame right you will generate a frame with the source at this uh, destination ip source ip destination uh, mac source mac right again the same thing happen over here source mac you know or destination mac you don't know right only broadcast mac address you will get to know only know so in that case you will send a app request to your uh, switch so how it will happen once you send the switch switch what will do he will first map the vlan id with the vn id right here i have given the example of the 60 right it will automatically map it will automatically map with the vni 6000 vni 7000 with the vlan 70 so first task he will do and 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 it's been configured in the uh, lip switch right and one thing i would uh, like to um, highlight over here again that is here i have given the example of the btf btf can btf can be created in the leap switch right in cisco but yes btf you can create in the virtual net network also virtual environment also like in vml in that case you need a virtual machine your uh, virtual machine will create this btf to get establish the uh, uh, overlay tunnel so here we are using uh, uh, to establish a vtap uh, to create a vtap as a leap switch to establish a vxlan yeah <coughs> so it is it can it can be same same thing can be created in the virtual uh, vmware virtual environment also right that's what i i highlight yeah so first thing he will do he will map right already we have a written while we run the script that uh, you have to map with this thing and that thing right uh, it will be map first right then only you will uh, understand right so once it's get map what it will do it will generate a packet right sorry uh, it will not generate packet it will make it an entry right so uh, entry in the sense uh, this mac address aaa uh, belongs to vlan vni 60 as it's a vlan uh, 60 i have already mapped so the entry always would be considering uh, vxlan right so v uh, vxlan mac address would be a a a which is a server 1 vm uh, vm1 uh, mac address and the uh, vtap right uh, vtap is the uh, the interface ip from where it is connected right it will make a, a table right now it will convert the uh, the frame with encapsulation with multiple header right you can see the large uh, frame it's become so how how it is the payload is there but uh, thing is that i would like to explain with the two part all right with the two part i will try to explain it's the same frame but uh, i will try to explain you so that it it can be easier to understand uh, this portion you can treat as a overlay because your l2 will travel over the tunnel right over the wall and this is consider this this portion will be considered with uh, udp encapsulation with the udp header that is the underlay underlay what is the underlay already i uh, explain your underlay is the l3 network and your l2 l2 uh, all the l2 network travel over the l3 using the tunnel right hope it is clear now uh, it's build the frame right with multiple uh, source multiple uh, mac address now this this packet will be uh, forwarded uh, to uh, uh, to the other other lip switch right so how it will forward now this is the important part huh? try to understand here 
you can see outer uh, earlier i have also uh, show you in uh, previous slide that is the outer uh, ip address outer mac address and other thing so outer source ip is would be your uh, b type ip source ip and destination as he don't uh, don't know the destination mac address that is the fff even he don't know the destination outer ip address what he will do he will send a multicast uh, ip address so but before that we have to create one multicast group right you have to create one multicast group and he will send the traffic to the multicast ip multicast group right now here one important part is that uh, this 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 vlan or this leaf switch is uh, this this pni uh, uh, member of this multicast group now similarly if you have multiple leaf switch who are the part of this multicast group right i just give the example try to draw please bear with me and try to understand right so here this leaf switch this leaf switch and this leaf switch and this leaf switch all are member of this, this uh, same multicast group right so once this packet sent as he don't know the destination outer ip address right he will forward the multicast group and multicast group will forward the same request to all the member right member 1 member 2 and member 3 uh, right everywhere everywhere he will uh, send the same thing hope it is uh, clear right <coughs> so what you'll do so it will forward so once it is forward this guy will received all right so once he received uh, this uh, this multicast he will uh, map the again i have show you the mapping part also it is been mapped to the vlan and the vlan will be sent it across to your uh, particular vlan so once this uh, this vm received this packet what you will do what you will do you will receive the packet and he will tell you that yes here i am and my yes my uh, my uh, ip is uh, 172.16.60.2 uh, and yes my mac address is uh, z z z z z right and once he you know then he will uh, reply back uh, to the switch l to switch right <coughs> so he will reply back once this guy uh, receive this thing again he will ma make a map right uh, already we have configured in the vlan uh, vx lan uh, lip switch it will map and it will uh, make a entry in the vtap table right mac table. so this is switch table uh, this is switch 1 table and this is the switch 2 table right it will automatically uh, create once it get the map uh, completed what it will do it will again uh, uh, add the header right again the same uh, same uh, two part of header but the same frame right uh, with the encapsulation uh, ip header uh, hope it is understandable right it's makes sense right multiple encapsulation there right uh, what is happening uh, the, the base part of the main concept is that your l2 packet right get get encapsulated right in in you just think it's encapsulated it uh, put in a packet or in a in a uh, in a uh, uh, bucket and then using your uh, underlay right uh, over uh, using your uh, underlay network it is sends the l2 traffic with encapsulation it send across uh, to the other leaf switch using your uh, tunnel right vxlan tunnel or vtap tunnel so this is how it is um, only main thing is that understandable is that this frame is the original pen we they are encapsulated and send it across using your overlay right and overlay is uh, top of the underlay right yes now you can see the outer outer uh, destination ip been changed outer source ip is also changed because he has learned this thing right and needs the group of this thing group of this uh, multicast group now he will uh, easily responds to that uh, particular vm so this is how initial uh, configuration happen and one thing that is <coughs> uh, the immediately the table will also be created right so here you can see the gzz is the mac address of the uh, vm3 
and yes uh, it is comes under the um, uh, 600 uh, 6000 uh, vni right and his uh, v type ip is a 222 of the v type ip right so this is how uh, this is how it is uh, being established but here uh, one thing is uh, very important that is <coughs> uh, i have given the example with uh, communication of the same vlan right same vlan so here within when within the same vlan communication happen it's called as a vxlan bridging right when uh, it's uh, communicate within the two different vlan that is called over here as a vxlan routing like in vlan we called it as a uh, l3 inter vlan routing right in that case the same thing happened same thing happened the, the the we have to create l3 vlan interface here we have to create the l3 vni we have to enable the routing so this is how it's it's possible uh, hope it is uh, makes sense right now another another part is that uh, here i have uh, show you the example with the group of uh, multicast group of the 239.1.1.1 you can create another multicast group where you can make the member right you can make the member of the vlan 70 vlan 70 and other other uh, other lip switch or other uh, um, v, uh, vlan will be member of this so whenever the communication happen uh, just give the example 239.2.2.2 uh, likewise so whenever this uh, vlan 70 try to uh, communicate with other uh, other uh, or other pm or same pm it will send his multicast group and will forward the same thing and then establish the MAC table kind of thing that is what I called as a uh, BTEP or uh, BNI uh, MAC table. All right. So this is how it's being communicated. And yes, uh, it's been designed uh, for the data center communication. Okay, please keep in mind always. Huh? Uh, it is being uh, designed for the data center multi tenant communications because it, it might have multiple uh, lip switches, multiple uh, locations. So in that case, you need to seamlessly uh, BM migrations. You you might have uh, one application server in this location as a server one, but your DB server is here. So in that case, your traffic will be east to west traffic always, and that will be travel with the L two L two communication purely L two communication. <coughs> Sorry. So that's what you need uh, the this this uh, communication right. Now uh, your uh, VXLAN switch act as a L2 gateway for the uh, VNI ID. So your uh, L2 switch will act as a VXLAN gateway. Please keep in mind, right? So since the IP uh, transport network is IP based, a uh, multicast group is mapped to uh, the L2 VNI. So to emulate the uh, bump traffic, right? So you know the bump traffic, right? what is uh, bum traffic uh, it's it's b for uh, broadcast e for unknown unicast and m for multicast so this is how uh, vxlan handle the bum traffic it sends the multicast group right and it's member of the other other multicast group in that case one one important part is that you have to play around your underlay with beam it is it is uh, standard and it is uh, very much required we have to enable the multicast using your underlay then only it is it is possible right the entire entire solutions is possible there is other way out this is the one of the best practices that's what i give the example you have to enable the multicast you have to play around with the, the beam and and, and uh, we, as it's a nexus environment you have to enable the jumbo frame also right so used uh, traffic will be travel over there for the uh, communication right Hmm. Yes, I uh, hope it is uh, clear. Uh, we explain uh, call the multi point uh, talent. Yeah, uh, hope it is uh, clear, right? It makes sense. Uh, if you have uh, any doubt, uh, please uh, put on comments sections and uh, let me know what are the person you have doubts. And in, in part two video, I'll explain uh, the intervalent communication, right? Uh, that is called over here VX land routing right and and uh, lisp is also one of the under uh, overlay uh, solution that that i will explain separately 
so yes uh, this is this is how a basic part of the vxlan this is how it is going to communicate uh, yeah let's let's go to the next part yeah so in vx during the vxlan session we uh, go through some terminology right vxlan gateway vxlan segment right uh, vxlan segment is nothing but a vlan segment right vlan 10 20 30 likewise this is, if i create a vlan that is called a v, uh, v, vlan segment over here it is called as a vxlan segment a bni is a similar to a vlan id right nothing but uh, that is and btap btap yes already i told you the vxlan tunnel endpoint it's a, it's a uh, endpoint of the tunnel or i my i mostly said the, the uh, starting point of so uh, the tunnel so from where your tunnel get established right and just like i uh, give the similarity of the gri tunnel yeah and vxlan header i have already explained you the vxlan what is the vxlan header how it comes in yeah uh, hope it is informative uh, hope it is uh, helpful uh, if it is uh, informative it, it, it if it increases your few of knowledge on bx vxlan right if it is helpful for you please share like and share your colleagues friends uh, so that they also can understand yes i will definitely come with uh, next part of the video gradually yeah thanks thanks for your time hope uh, it's not waste your time